A brand new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast is about to begin. It's time to be inspired by simple and actionable solutions for your business. If you're an established business owner or just laying down the first brick of your future empire, the mantra is the same. We will flip any failure into a positive and use it to our advantage. This show is all about turning cold into diamonds. With the right plan and mindset, anything is possible. And your host, Jennifer Dawn, business coach and founder of The Best Planner Ever, will help you to achieve your ambitious goals. Success is closer than you think. Now, here's Jennifer Dawn. Okay, welcome everybody to the Happy Productive Podcast. I'll be honest, I'm sitting here chatting with Leslie and I was like, okay, this is great stuff. We got to get it like on the recording. So welcome, welcome. I want to um, just share really quickly. So we received an outreach email and the per- and we get a lot of these to be on the show and um, asking, you know, could Leslie be on the Happy Productive Podcast? And as I'm reading the outreach email and I was like, Leslie Cooster, like this name, I was like, Something about this name sounds really familiar. I don't know why. And of course, I click on the website and I'm like, Leslie, gosh, like several years ago, I don't even know how many, probably six, seven, eight, I don't know, many years ago, I coached you on Profit First. And I and when I went to Leslie's website and I saw that she got her business to seven plus figures and is now coaching others to do the same. As a business coach, so often we will coach clients and we send them out into the world because I always love to empower everybody to be that better business owner, that better version of themselves. And you send them out into the world and you don't always know what happened and you don't always hear back. And so I was just so tickled. I'm like, yes, yes, let's bring Leslie on the show because I want to catch up and I want to see everything that you've been up to. And so Leslie, just give give everybody a quick little introduction of who you are and what you've been up to since you and I did our initial Profit First coaching. Yeah, great. You know, I was so excited to, to, to reconnect with you because you had a really big effect on my business and the profitability of my business. And I have, okay, I have a business and my business is called Back From Bali. So I manufacture beautiful bohemian kind of clothing from Bali, Indonesia, manufacture everything in Bali. And then I import it all into the United States and I sell only online. So I'm primarily on Amazon and also my own website. And so this is an inventory based business. So there's a lot of money that it costs to buy the goods, to get to shipping, to the payment to Amazon and all that stuff. And so at the beginning of my business and this part of the business, the women's clothing, I just was not doing that well at all. And then I think I made a decision that I wanted to start making more money and be successful. And this was after many years, to tell you the truth, where I wasn't that successful. And it really started with that decision. Like, I really, really want to get successful. I want to build a business. I want to, you know, become what I knew I could become. But even with making that decision and even getting a a coach, which I did, I still was starting to notice I was carrying debt. And I had come across the book Profit First uh, from actually my coach who was coaching me. She was like, you have to read it. And so I did. But you know, there's a lot of details in it, which I didn't quite understand and the percentages and all that stuff. So I reached out to Profit First and they referred me to you. And I remember at that time I was carrying about $60,000 in debt. And through the work that we did together, looking at excess inventory and many other things, uh, slowly but surely I got rid of the debt. And I think when you and I were working together, I'm going to ballpark it, but I was doing somewhere maybe $300,000, $400,000 a year in sales. Yeah. And I'm now doing multiple millions. Yeah. And I carry no debt. I have no debt in my business. So fantastic. And I love what you said about the first thing that you had to do was you had to make a decision. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be as successful as I'm capable of being. And you made that decision. And even around the debt, 
on some level, there was a decision there that you made that I'm not going to carry this debt anymore. And then you got help. You reached out and you're just like, you know, I need some help. And you surrounded yourself with people. And the reason why I point this out, because if you're listening and you're struggling in your business or in your life, and I've all, I always say, guys, it starts with a decision. That's where your power is. You got to make that decision. But then unless you can do it all on your own, which most of us can't, I certainly can't. The next decision is check the ego and get some help from somebody who knows, you know, what they are doing and look at what, where you are now, Leslie, in, you know, multiple seven figure business. And I I assume you're still using profit first. I am. I am still using profit first. Absolutely. Because I I get paid uh, basically every two weeks from Amazon And the first thing I do is I open up my allocation spreadsheet with the percentages. And, you know, it's gotten more developed over these years. You know, there's certain other things I need to be, you know, saving for. And um, such as more profit and savings and other things. But without fail, I do my allocations as soon as the money comes in. I pay myself, you know, I call it my salary account and I transfer the money into all the different uh, accounts that I have. And it works. It, It works because like, you know, you know, most people are like so scared about tax time or, you know, that we have to pay all the quarterly estimates or whatever. You know, I just like open my spreadsheet and see the money and have it. And there's nothing so wonderful than always having this money and also always having my salary and 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 that I, you know, that I am making money for my business and I'm the one who actually gets paid first before anybody else. And I think, you know, early, this is really important. Early on when I was first working with my my coach at the very beginning, and she asked me that question, do you pay yourself? And I remember saying, well. Yeah, kind of, you know, I mean, I pay for like plane tickets and vacations and clothes and stuff. She said, no, do you actually pay yourself? And I said, am I supposed to be? (laughs) (laughs) And I think this is something so important because you will make and have more money when you are given more money yourself. And I think this is a big mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is thinking that they don't need to be paying themselves. Um, It works. It changes your mindset and your bank account. Right. And when you make that decision that you're going to get your finances, you know, in order and be a good manager of those finances, the profit first system, I use it with all of my clients. I use it in my own business. And one of the things you said that was also so important is that you've stuck with it for all these years. And if if any of you are listening and you're like, oh, I got to go get profit first. It's going to save me financially. It's not. Profit first works when you have money and profit first works to help you make better financial decisions. And profit first will help you take control and understand your finances better, but you still have to do the work. You still have to have the right money mindset. You still have to stick with it long-term, but if you stick with it long-term, it's like a good investment. It just, it just keeps compounding and working and working and There's so few things in business that are a guarantee, but with Profit First, I feel like if you really follow that system, it absolutely will yield amazing results, you know, if you stick with it long-term, and which is what you did. And when I hear you say, you know, I do my allocations, you've also built the habit, right? We're talking, this is June, we're talking a lot about habits and we're doing a habit challenge. And when we look at success, so much success can be predicted by our daily habits. And it just sounds like you now have this beautiful habit of managing your money, doing your allocations and really, and paying yourself first. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you're right. It is that habit of doing that all the time. And, you know, all of these structures, like the allocations of profit first and creating an operations list and then knowing, you know, what all the tasks are in your business, like all these structures and habits. Also, like, how about looking at your income statement once a month, at least, you know, for example, as that is a habit, you know, these, all of these things uh, grow and, and almost compound for you to like 
take control of your business and not be frightened by any of it, but be like, whoa, I know how much money I'm making and I know where my money is. And it's so empowering that. And that's what we want to feel. We want to feel yeah. like empowered. We want to feel as in control as we can over our businesses. We want to feel like, you know, we are the ones that through our vision, through our mindset, through our focus, all of that, that it's going to be steering the, our business ship in the direction we want to be steering it in. Yeah. Now, profit first, obviously, is an important, I think, first step when you start in your business and you were in, you know, six figures. But talk to me a little bit about what else did you do on this journey to get to a multiple seven figure business? Yeah, you know, you know, I started to ask myself that question also because you know I don't have a business background. Um, I I manufacture women's clothing. I don't even know how to sew. Uh, you know, there's all of these reasons why I wouldn't have a multiple million dollar business, but I do. So you know, a few years back, I started to ask myself that question too. How in the world did I do it? And that is why I had mentioned to you, I've written a book that's going to be coming out in, in the fall called Seven Keys to Seven Figures, because the seven keys I realized is how I did it. And, you know, one of them, one of the keys that we already spoke about is getting the help because you, you just absolutely have to. But another key, or at least the first two, which are so important, is just the wanting it. And you touched on that before, but probably it's the most, one of the most important, is you have to get really clear that that is what you really, really, really want. And when you do, and you really like become honest with yourself, and in my case, what I'm talking about was wanting money. So you know, just honestly, I I got to a point in my business where I was making like 50,000 a year. And it just, I felt disappointed. I was in my early 50s. It wasn't like I was 25. I was, you know, almost 55. And this disappointment in my ability to really like have this big abundant life was really frustrating me so much. And I, what I realized for me was this mindset that I had had that success was going to take away my time and yeah. that success was going to, uh, you know, interfere with the things that I wanted to be doing. This is, this was my negative mindset. And I got very honest with myself and I realized that actually I actually want money. That's what I want. I don't care how superficial people think it sounds. I don't care what anyone thinks about me saying that right now, but damn it, that's what I wanted. And I started to realize that so much of my mindset stuff around success, such as it's going to stop me from whatever I wanted to be doing, was, was my own fears, basically. And now that I'm on the other side of that success, I have so much more time to do the things I want to be doing. <laughs> so we trick ourselves. So you. So the reason why I'm mentioning the wanting and, and, and not only the wanting, but being honest with yourself, like be mm-hmm. honest with what you actually want. You want to make money. You don't want to make money. You, you, you want a business. You don't really want a business. What do you want? And that is absolutely the first key to success. Oh, I love that. And that goes right back to making that decision. There's so much power in the decision, but there's only power when it, it's backed up by what's in your heart and what you really want. And that that's where that's where the decision really comes from is like getting clear. Here's what I really, really want. And now I'm going to make the decision to go after it and to go get it and to set those fears aside. Or I always like when I bump up against some fears, I'm like, okay, this tells me I'm on the right track because I'm stepping outside my comfort zone. Those fears are normal. They're going to pop up when you get out of that comfort zone, which you have to do. And it's always kind of like, oh, is this scaring me a little bit? Awesome. I'm on the right track. Let me just plow forward. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yes. Yay. I love this. All right. You have, I'm not going to ask you to share all the keys, but I would love you to share one more. Let's hear one more key because this is so fantastic. Uh, The other key is focus. That's actually key number two. And um, that was a a really big one for me. So not only did I have my business, I actually had two businesses. One business was my my business I still have back from Bali, but I also was uh, counseling young girls. I had a program called Girl Power, which was an empowerment program for girls. 
And what I realized was that the reason why I was not growing my businesses was because I had two at the same time. And this is something that a lot of women really suffer from because we actually Mm -hmm. think we're really good at multitasking, Mm -hmm. which we think we are, but we're not. The, The truth is like the human brain, I read something like you literally can only focus on one thing at one time. We can't do things at the same time. And what I noticed was that when I would focus on the back from Bali business, sales would go up and things would start to, you know, explode. And guess what? Girl power would start to go down and I would get girls dropping out from my programs and things like that. So I would run over to girl power and I would start doing stuff there and that would grow and back from Bali was going down. And this was my seesaw for years and years. And when I made that decision about wanting it, the money part, I realized that that had been my mistake and I needed to let one of the business go go immediately. And yeah. that is what I did. So I let one of them go. I let the girl power go, even though my head yeah. I struggled with that because my head was saying, don't let go of girl power. That's spiritual and helpful and counseling. Right. And how could you possibly go into back from Bali, which is, you know, materialistic and selling right. clothes. And my head was struggling with this too. But I have to say, John, in that moment, there was such clarity. I had such yeah. a gut feeling that I should go for back from Bali. And I decided I'm following that gut. And I did. And I literally had like, I was sitting in my chair, remember, in our our apartment we used to live in, in my little IKEA table. (laughs) And I made that decision. That's it. I'm letting go, girl power. I'm building my business. I'm going to make money. That's it. I'm not waking up on my next birthday, not making more than 100000 a year. And I felt like the angels started yelling and screaming and singing, hallelujah. And I got chills <laughs> up my spine, which I still do when I say this now. And I knew it was the right decision. And that was how it began. Gosh, I love this story so much because you were split. And I read somewhere and I don't remember who it was. So whoever you are, I'm giving you credit but that when we think we can multitask, but what's actually happening is we go from this project to that project, we're losing a little bit of our focus. There's like a residue, a residue of our focus that gets left behind every time we switch back and forth. And this was one thing for for me, I prided myself on, I'm such a great multitasker. I'm not really. And when I can now, I've had to shape shift this and now like each week I have my A task, which is my primary focus for the week. And that's where I stay. Um, I still have my time during the day where I have to be switching the, you know, client, 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 but whatever project it is that I'm working on, like, I just feel like I'm so much better when I can just focus on that one project that I want to move forward for the week. So I think that's a huge lesson for entrepreneurs is like, guys, you're not really as good of a multitasker as you might think when it comes to really moving something big, like growing a business, moving that forward. I, yeah. And I love that you had the guts to make that decision. I'm going to go after one and no longer split my focus anymore. And that's a hard, big decision to make, to let something go. But it's those big decisions like that, those hard ones. Those are the ones that have the biggest impact. And you did it. That's right. Exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. I love it. And guys, if you're listening to this, so I've experienced something similar in my business where I have felt kind of split because we have the coaching. Last year, we started a marketing agency for our coaching clients because we saw so many business owners struggling in their marketing and getting ripped off by so many of these shitty marketing companies. And I'm just like, guys, you guys have to do a better job, but you know they're not going to. So we can do a better job. So we started the marketing agency. We have a membership platform and we have my best planner ever. But they all kind of overlap and they intertwine and they go together. It's not two distinct different businesses like what you had. You had two very different businesses. But I've had to make the decision to put people in charge of each of those divisions because I felt so split between these kind of four. And and then we added unbreakable retreats. So let's give it five. So, hey, Jennifer. 
how are you really going to have focus and do a good job if you're splitting yourself five ways? I can't, but yet these things all tie together for the business. And so um, again, focus, I need to focus on driving the company forward. And for me, coaching is really my space, my zone. I, I need to be in that coaching space. And so bringing in people, which when you like have to let your baby go and like put it, somebody else in charge of it, it's so hard. But if you find the right people who can help you get the vision out there and who believe in the vision, believe in the direction, and you bring these people in and you let them run with it, it's amazing. <laughs> You're no longer split five ways. And now you've got this beautiful team supporting the growth of your vision. Oh my God. I mean, this is, this is the, this is the next level stuff, isn't it? And that is like, is exactly what I'm going through right now because my business, um, I was wondering should, you know, as you mentioned, I started, I wrote a book, I'm starting to do consulting. So this is really not a focused vision. I'm, I have my business still, and now this is completely different than building my, my clothing business. So what do I do? And so I was really juggling with maybe it's time to sell my business and then maybe just focus on the consulting only. And I actually had some coaching done by another mentor that I respect so much who had a actually a 10 figure exit from Amazon. So he, he knows my space and e-commerce. And I really thought he would tell me to sell my business and, and to focus on this new business, basically. And right. he didn't. What he said I should do is he said I should really hire an operations manager and I should get a team member in who could really uh, help me grow my business. And I could be in what he calls the owner seat. His name is Ryan Daniel Moran, by the way. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to say, when he said that to me, I can't tell you how much I disagreed with him. I was like, you know, even though I didn't say anything, I was thinking he doesn't know my business. He doesn't really know me. That maybe works for other people. It's not going to work for me. I don't know how to find anybody like that. How can anyone possibly do that? All of those stories went on and they went on for a while, like several weeks until I all of a sudden just felt like, well, why can't that happen? Why, why do I have to sell the business? Why can't I think in a new way completely? And so that's actually where I'm at right now. So I have yeah. hired someone and I am now uh, growing as an owner of my business in ways that I never did before, which is called team building. And yeah vision and managing and all these other skills that I never have done before. So this is, this is the next stage right now. And, you know, I'm so excited about this. Oh, I love it. And I want you guys to really listen to when Leslie said, I work with this coach and I work with this coach and I too have worked with different coaches along the way. I have two that I'm working with right now, both amazing. And the coaches will say things to you when they said to me, Brian, who's actually a coach on my team. And as part of the interview process, I said, well, before I'm going to turn you loose on my clients, I want to work with you. And I'm like, here's, here's where I'm at. Coach me on it. And he did. And I was like, oh, crap. And the results were, of course, phenomenal. So now he's a part of our team, which is awesome. But this is one of the things that he had said to me was, you need to have people in charge of these different profit centers. And I was so resistant too, Leslie. I was just like, nobody could do it better than me, right? Ego, 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 ego. I worked so hard. I'm like, what if I turn this over and they screw it up? And I was really resistant to that process as well. But now Mono Bear is on board. Yeah. I see it, right? It's working. It's working so much better. And that's where the time comes from is yeah. when you can be like, hey, team, I know you got it. And it took time to onboard, to train, to get, you know, get these people developed so they could be in these positions. But that's where you get your time back is now you've got somebody who shares the vision, your values, you know, pushing this thing forward. Now you don't have to be split in so many different directions. But I shared my story too, because if you're listening and you're in that place and you're resistant, or if you're listening and you're like, yeah, I need a coach, but I don't want to spend the money. Basically, that means I am unwilling to invest in my own success. You are your best investment. 
And you hear Leslie's story, you hear me talking. We took that risk. We spent the money. We, we took the time to find the right coaches. And then when the coaches coached us, we listened and then we took action, right? So if you really have made this decision that you want to get to the next level, find the help, invest in yourself, listen to what they're saying and take action. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. By the way, that's key number six in my book. Oh gosh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so I can... so have to definitely get Leslie's book. If you love what we're talking about, all these keys are in there. <laughs> that's right. It's actually, that's right. Cause that is how you do build these businesses. And, you know, th- this other part that you just brought up is really interesting. And I've been thinking about that too, which you said, you know, hiring the coaches and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, people are really resistant to this because, yeah, it is often expensive and it does take money. But I have really learned that not only do you get the coaching or the consulting or, you know, the help that you need, like literally the help you need for your business, you get more than that when you start to join up with or, and, and get peop, get into these other people's circles, which is you get to connect with other amazing women entrepreneurs. You get to like create new relationships that you don't even know what will in the future, what will happen. And why I'm bringing this up right now is because I needed to get endorsements for my book mm. and I really went to my mentors that I have hired in the past and who I've met other people through them. And I'm not saying they've endorsed me only because I gave them money, but they endorse me because I did invest in them. And they also invested in me and knowing who I was. And it's like you support each other. So you get other things also from making these connections with other people, even you and me, Dawn, the reason why you had me on your show right now, and you said many people want to be on your podcast, but you were like, wait, I know her, we did work together in the past. And this is an example of how like more yes. goodness comes to your life. The more you kind of pay to play is sort of another way to say it. Right. But putting yourself out there and willing to spend that money on your own development, it opens doors. It opens doors because you're going to meet people, make relationships. We have a wait list to be on the podcast until into next year. But when I saw your name, I was like, oh my gosh, like we're going to make time for Leslie because we know her, your go-getter. I was like, oh my gosh, to bring back a past profit person, you know, client and hear how amazing you've done because I know that's going to inspire some of our listeners who have maybe been on the fence about profit first, been on the fence about hiring a coach, been on the fence about making a decision, been on the fence about being split in 12 directions and deciding on one. Like, I hope that they, you guys listen to this and it inspires you just to, to see that there is such a bright light on the other side, you know, even for my coaching practice, I was a one woman show for many years because I wanted to be, I grown these bigger companies. I had a lot of employees. I knew all the headaches that went along with it and I just didn't want it. And so I stayed in that space for many years and then COVID happened so many of my clients, their revenues just dried up. I mean, a lot of big problems and they couldn't afford coaching. And so I was like, guys, we're in this together. And I gifted basically three to four months of coaching or reduced fees or, 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 or just gave away free coaching. And I was like, we're getting through this. And we did. All of us came through. And it was interesting to me because my revenues nosedived too, because none of my clients could pay anymore. And this is how I buy groceries for my family. But you know what? It was okay. And we came through it. And after that, my business went bigger. And I realized at that time I was ready to go bigger. And I now have a coaching team. We have six other coaches on our team. And it scared me a little bit. I was just like, but what if they don't coach right or they send somebody, you know, down the wrong path? And again, it's some of that ego of just like, it can only be me. And you guys, it's crap. It's not true. If you want to scale and grow, you got to chuck that ego. And now I work with these amazing coaches and I'm just like, how could I, how, I I don't know how I could have done it. I I couldn't go further. And now it's so rewarding to have these coaches on your team. And then your clients come and say, 
Brian really helped me. Jacqueline really helped me. I'll coach a client. And if one of my coaches is coaching one of their executives, because we have some of that going on too, and they'll be like, oh my gosh, your coach helped my executive so much. I see the difference. And it's just, it's gotten bigger and it's expanded. But it started with my decision to get over my fears, to expand the team, to check my ego, and then and and to make it happen and to roll with it. So, so much. I, I love the parallels between the two. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah, it takes courage, doesn't it? Actually, it all takes courage. Um, yeah. And getting away from what we are small minded thinking, which is which keeps us small, basically. Right. And now that you're expanding to this next level, which is so exciting, you're hiring an operations manager, you're going to hire these people to run your business. That's going to free up your time even more. Yeah, that's the goal. So this is where I'm at right now. So I'm at the beginning stages of it. So I have hired somebody and she's doing a great job. But what I'm now, the new seat I'm in is manager now, which actually I really love because that way you could also mentor other people too about like how to work, how to schedule your time, how to not work, you know, huge long hours, all these kind of things, which has been so important to me in building my own business. So, yeah. yes. Oh, I love this. Okay, you have to share where you are right now yeah. physically <laughs> and then where you're headed because it's so inspiring and I really want everybody to hear where you are right now. Yeah, so at this very moment, I'm in Zurich, Switzerland. My husband, Heinz, basically I retired him this past September because he had a regular job and because of you know the nature of my work, I don't really have to be anywhere. I could just work anywhere as long as there's Wi-Fi. And I really wanted a life with him where we can just travel and be wherever we wanted to be. So in the last, really since November, uh, we, you know, started off in in the New York area and then drove down to Florida and we were in Florida for a couple months. Then we were skiing in, in Aspen in March and then in April, we flew to back to Zurich and we then drove to France and Spain, and we were there for the month of April. Then we flew to Greece, and we were in Greece for the month of May, uh, visiting two beautiful islands there. We're now, right now, back in Switzerland, which is one of our bases, and next week we are headed for Africa to do a safari and also to see the gorillas. So, This is our life right now. It's not without its challenges as well, you know, because I am running a a business and doing all of this at the same time. So it's not always easy, but um, it's certainly exciting. It sounds so exciting. And I almost said, you know, live in the dream, which you really are. But I love that you said, but it's not without its challenges because you are still running a business. And so... I know sometimes we think, oh, I'm going to get to this place and everything's going to be perfect. And you guys, it's such bullshit. You get to a place and then it just has different challenges. It's a better place, but it has its challenges. And so just always kind of keep that in mind. And I love that you mentioned that, Leslie. But I mean, all of this, you wouldn't be traveling the world and running a multiple seven-figure business and and still pushing your comfort zone, still pushing outside your own fears to where you are right now to go to that next level. None of that wouldn't have would have happened if you hadn't started with making that decision. I'm not going to have another birthday and not be making six figures a year. Totally. It's really it really is as simple as that, everybody. It really is as simple as um, knowing what you want and just doing it and making that decision. But it's not always easy to, first of all, know what you want. Well, actually, I think we do know what we want. I think the problem is we're not honest about it. And that is really where the problem comes in because our our minds start to say, yeah, but we can't want that or right. it doesn't sound right or you know that that's going to create problems for me or whatever it is. So it's getting that honesty about what you really, really want. I wanted to build a business. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to be free with my husband to live wherever we want to be living. These are like strong wants. I wanted to write a book. I wanted to help and inspire other women entrepreneurs. So these are my wants 
I also want a lot of downtime, you know, so that, you know, you have to follow what it is you really, really want. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. Leslie, that is a perfect place. I want to leave our listeners with that to just get clear on what you really, really want. Please tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah, thank you. So for the beautiful clothing, you could check out Amazon. Back from Bali is the name of my company. And for coaching, consulting, the book, please just go directly to my website, which is lesliecooster.com. And feel free to follow me also on all social media. Wonderful. And we're going to put the links in our show notes as well. Leslie, thank you so much for being here today. I think your time zone, you're probably several hours ahead of us in Switzerland. I, my daughter actually just went, um, she graduated college. And so she wanted to go visit her friend in Italy. And so she flew through Zurich where you are right now. And I think the time zone, I think you're several, about six hours ahead of us right now. I'm in New York. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. very nice. But it shows you can just work from anywhere in the world as long as you have the Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's all you need. And that's easy to find these days. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Leslie. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, and Don, and thank you for all the help you gave to me in my business. You you were just one of the you were one of the people that helped build my business to the multiple seven figures that it is. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's show and be sure and tune in next time for more great stuff. All right, go out there and have a happy, productive day. I hope you found today's episode of the Happy Productive Podcast inspiring. Every successful business is formed by a set of small, consistent, and attainable steps. Visit us at jenniferdawncoaching.com to take your next step and learn how to meet your business goals. On the website, you'll find free resources, along with the links to the life-changing coaching programs that have transformed the personal lives of so many of Jennifer's clients. Many of them started their journey by listening to this podcast. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode. This is the She Leads Podcast Network.